Hi, welcome to today's lecture on the tear film. Now, the tear film is an incredibly important topic in ophthalmology, especially for those working with dry eye disease. So let's get down to it. What exactly is the tear film? When we think about the tear film, what do we mean? So what is it? So first of all, the first thing we need to think about when we're defining what the tear film is, is that it is a tri-laminar structure. It's a trilaminar structure, which means that there are three layers to it. There's three distinct components that make up the tear film. And what those layers are, we'll get to in just a few minutes. Where do we find the tear film? We find it predominantly over the cornea, but also peripherals of the cornea, we can find it on the conjunctiva. What lies exterior to the tear film is usually the atmosphere. And that's important because that's where our corneal epithelial cells and the superficial cells of the conjunctiva get their oxygen from. There are also areas of the tear film which lie between the lids which don't have atmosphere exterior to them but rather have conjunctiva exterior to them. Remember, we have three different types of conjunctiva. We have the bulba, we have the fornicele, and we have the tarsal. Okay, so now we've spoken about what it is Let's move on to what are the functions of the tear film. So any body part or anything in our body, we need to know why we have it. What does it do for us? Because things that are redundant generally aren't kept through evolution. So first of all, the first thing that it does is it provides a smooth optical surface. And that's very important in the eye because the main one of the major functions of the eye is to focus light from external sources and focus it onto the retina. And if we don't have a smooth optical surface to focus it through, then the light becomes unfocused and we don't get a clear image formed on our retina. Another important function is that of local defense. So <clears throat> our bodies have innate and adaptive immunity and the tear film forms an important part of the innate immunity of the eye. The tear film also has an important homeostatic function, and this homeostatic function is twofold. It's both involved in waste removal and also transport of important nutrients and other molecules that are essential to the cells of the eye. Okay, so we've spoken about what it is and what the functions of the, the major functions of the tear film are. Let's move on to the different layers. Remember we mentioned earlier that it was a tri-laminar structure. So the first layer and the most exterior layer is called the lipid layer. Now, the lipid layer is predominantly secreted from the meibomian glands and also from the glands of Zeiss. Now, these two types of glands are found at the edge of the lids. Now, the lipid layer contains two different types of lipids. So there's two types, and we have polar and we have nonpolar. And the reason that this is important is because it's involved in a very specific function of the lipid layer. Now, the polar lipids interact with the second layer of the tear film, which is the aqueous layer, which is predominantly a water-based layer. So the polar lipids interact with a water-based aqueous layer, and then the non-polar lipids are exterior to that. So there's two layers that form up the micro-anatomy of the lipid layer. Now, why that's important is because the lipid layer is involved in the prevention of overflow of tears because if they didn't if we didn't have this lipid layer the aqueous layer would continuously spill over the lids and this continuous overspill would damage the skin around the lids okay so we've looked at the lipid layer now we're going to move on to the second layer which is the middle layer of the trilaminar structure and also the largest layer so that is the aqueous layer now, the aqueous layer is secreted predominantly by the lacrimal glands. And what's important to know here is that we have two different types. We have the main lacrimal gland 
and this is situated superior temporally in our orbital cavity and has two distinct parts and then also the accessory lacrimal glands which are scattered throughout our conjunctiva. It used to be thought that these two had different roles in terms of their lacrimal secretions but now it's, and now it's thought that they work as a team to create their secretions. So the accessory lacrimal glands are called the glands of Krause and the glands of Wolfring. And then we also just need to think about what is inside, what, can, what makes up the aqueous. So there are a few different things that make up our aqueous. There are the electrolytes, there are solutes, and there are also proteins. And these are all important in the major function of the aqueous, which is its homeostatic role. So the electrolytes and the solutes are predominantly involved in its homeostatic role. So the homeostatic part consists of waste removal. So the cells of the epithelium and the endothelium excrete their waste products and it's carried away, or it's first dissolved into the aqueous and then carried away by the flow of, of the tear film from the lacrimal glands into the, the lacrimal canaliculi and then into the, the sac and then into the duct and out through the nose. And then also it brings important solutes and electrolytes to those cells. Now, the second major important function of the aqueous layer is the defense mechanism. And we mentioned this a little bit earlier about, um, about the innate immunity of the tear film. And what's important about it is that the proteins that are in the aqueous layer are things like IGS, I mean, sorry, IGAS, which is secretory IGA, lysozyme, lactoferrin, lipocalins, defensins, interferons, cytokines, and growth factors. So we have this myriad of different proteins, and all of this is involved in, 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 in maintaining the, the local defense of the eye. And there's, there's, there's proteins that combat specifically bacterial infections, there's proteins that combat specifically viral infections. There's just a vast array of proteins, and it's a bit beyond the scope of this lecture to go into all of them, but it is definitely something worthwhile reading. Okay, so now we're going to look at the third and the final layer, which is the mucin layer. Now, the mucin layer is predominantly secreted by the conjunctival goblet cells, and these lie scattered throughout the conjunctiva. The function includes lubrication, includes trapping of foreign particles or, or things like that, and also decreasing the surface tension. And the way that it does this is our corneal endothelium has so sort of microplicae which extend from their, their surfaces and it interacts with the mucin layer to form the structure that decreases the surface tension. And that's very important because we need to have a, the, a low surface tension to maintain the integrity of our tear form. Okay, so we've now looked at the, we've looked at the three layers of our tear film. We've looked at the major functions of the tear film. We've also delved into the specific functions of the certain layers and how they come together to make the, the tear forms major functions. And we've also looked at what exactly it is. So let's delve now a little bit into tear secretion and the physiology behind tear secretion and how it comes about. Okay, so when we're, when we're talking about tear secretion, what we need to realize is that it is predominantly based on secondary messenger function. So tear production, let me just put that there, tear production. And the major point here is that it's secondary messengers, secondary messengers that carry this function out. So how this functions is that we have we have our secretors, our tear secretors, which we spoke about a bit earlier, and these all receive neurological input, both from the parasympathetic and the sympathetic systems. 
the parasympathetic system or the sympathetic system then stimulate these tear, these tear secretors. And when they stimulate it, that brings about a secondary messenger system. And the two major secondary messenger systems that are involved here are the calcium, sorry, calcium slash protein kinase C dependent system. So long names, but important to know about. And then also the C A and P dependent system. And essentially what that means is that the parasympathetic and the sympathetic system stimulate and they cause either one of these two systems to be stimulated. These systems then undergo a long sort of molecular um, chain reaction and that chain reaction ultimately leads to the secretion of, of um, electrolytes and of water and ultimately brings about tear secretion. Again, this is, is very detailed and it's beyond the scope of this lecture to go into the detail of it. But it's well worth reading about these systems to fully understand how the tear film is secreted. Okay, so we've looked now at tear production. Let's take a look quickly at tear dysfunction. Just a brief brief look into it because it's important, it's an important topic, especially if you if you're working in clinical ophthalmology, because dry eye disease and these sorts of disorders are very very common. So, tear dysfunction. Now, when we, when we think about dysfunction of the tear form, we need to think of there's three main areas in where there can be an abnormality. So, it's either in the composition. There's a problem in the composition of the tear form. So, we discussed a bit earlier about the three layers of the tear film and how all of those layers are important to its functioning. So if one of those layers is disturbed, it affects all the other layers and the whole tear film becomes dysfunctional and that leads to the symptoms of dry eye disease. We also may have problems in the amount. So yes, we may have all the constituents that makes up the tear film, but we might have too much or too little of a certain part of the tear film. And then the third major reason why we get tear dysfunction is because of surface problems. So if the tear film doesn't have a good surface to lie on, it becomes pulled in certain areas and raised in other areas, and it doesn't allow the tear film to, for to form a proper trilaminal structure, which is essential to its function. So tear dysfunction is usually the result of one of these three categories. Okay. So we've actually done quite a lot in terms of the tear film. Just to end off this lecture, I'm just going to touch on a few important measurements um, and indices that are important when we consider the tear film. So let me just zoom in here a little bit. So we're looking at measurements. Okay, so when we're thinking about the tear film, we talk about its thickness, the thickness of the tear film, and that varies from about three to four micrometers thick. Okay, the volume of the tear film is usually about seven to eight microliters, and why this is important is because many ophthalmic medications are supplied in the form of teardrops, and now the volume of a teardrop is 50 microliters the eye can probably hold a maximum of 10 microliters of tear film. So what that means, the consequences of that, is that every teardrop you put in, only 20% of that is actually effective because the eye can't hold more than 10 microliters. But the usual volume of tear film is between 7 to 8 microliters. The turnover, the turnover of the tear film is about 12 to 16% every minute. And that obviously changes if we stimulate it or in other circumstances. So if you are crying and, and circumstances like that, it can change the rate of turnover. And then we must also just consider the pH. The pH is usually between 7 point, apologies, 
it's between 6.5 and 7.6 and why that's important is because when we when we think of pathologies and we think of trauma to the eye chemical burns whether it's acidic or alkali and the implications of that are important when we consider the the ph so this was completes the lecture of the tear film this is the mind map that we've made this is available for download if you if you would like it um, there is a link to download this one so if you've enjoyed this please like and subscribe to my channel um, you can request other lectures and thanks for listening i hope you've learned something